Hey everyone, welcome back to the Goff House. If you've been here before, if you're new, welcome. I'm so glad you're here. I'm Jenny, and today we are canning up yet another meal starter. This one's actually in response to my friend Linda over at Linda's Pantry. We are doing dueling pizzoles. I know mine's a little late. She did hers last week. By the time you see this, it's going to be two weeks in between, but I've had a lot of other videos to do. So today I am showing you how I make the base for my pozole and can it. So let's get going. All right, folks, I have a lot of pork butt here. I am not using all of this pork butt for the pozole today, but since I have it out, it's still kind of like just about a quarter of the way frozen, um, only because it takes so long to defrost in the fridge. And I am going to use part of this for pozole. And the other part, I'm still going to dice up, get it into a container, put it back in the refrigerator. And tomorrow, I'm going to use that to can something else. So um, I just wanted to, and I'm not going to bring you along for the whole slicing. <laughs> because otherwise, it's going to take me a long time. I am slicing these um, into cubes. You want to remove some fat, not all fat. So... And this, um, I know I've pointed it out to you before, but this is my Rata slicer. It works excellent. And you know, anytime I've got a big meat cutting project, I just run it right through my um, Rata knife sharpener. Oop. <laughs> this one's kind of stuck together. It was at the end. All right. So I am going to keep on dicing this up and I am going to fashion this recipe after the roast pork and spicy broth. So I'm going to do it in that fashion, uh, meaning I am going to roast the pork first. Um, I love how it turns out that way and so that's what I want to do. I am cutting the pork a little bit smaller than I do when I do a little bit smaller today than I usually do when I'm doing the roast pork and spicy broth. Man, I love this knife. It just cuts through everything like butter. Especially after it's newly sharpened. Check this out. A couple slices all the way down with no pressure. My endless thing's great. Just be careful not to cut your fingers off. So, anyway, I will leave this knife in the description box below. My Rada um, link is down there, but I'll leave this knife specifically because I get a lot of questions about it. And that's why I always point it out when I use it, FYI, in case you're wondering. but it makes your job go a heck of a lot faster when you got all this stuff to chop up. A good knife, that's what you need when you're prepping and canning. Plus they're affordable. Okay. So I'm just gonna do two sheet pans uh, full you're going to want at least a pound per jar or two pounds per No, you don't want two pounds. You're going to want about a pound per jar because we want all that broth in there because this is a meal starter. So we're going to do half meat, half broth. Really good broth. and I'm leaving some of the fat in there because fat does hold flavor. And I do make pozole sometimes with my pork and spicy broth. But then I use that jar, and then I use a jar of my um, enchilada sauce. And that's how I do that. So it'll be nice having the pork, having the pozole already on my shelf with all the seasonings in there, and I just gotta pull it out and add my hominy. Now, the hominy, 
Um, I will tell you, I buy in large cans because I can get them, the number 10 cans, because I can get them at my market for like $2.99 or sometimes $1.99 on sale. And when I do that, I open them up, I rinse them, and then I freeze them in freezer bags. Um, in portions that I'm going to use for two people or three people to make small portions of soup. You know, if I need to make a big batch of soup, I'll use a couple of them. But other than that, it just makes life easier. Um, yes, it does take up a little bit of freezer space, but when you're compacting them and freezing them into little quart bags and rolling them up, it really doesn't take a lot of freezer space. And I actually happen to have freezer space, so um, that's what works out for me. If it works better for you to just buy smaller cans of it, um, it is not something, I've never canned hominy, so I don't know if you can do that. Um, I never even really looked into it, but the freezing just works out for me, so. You probably could slice through this much faster than me. I don't know why I'm always so picky about not getting too much fat in it. <laughs> that I stand here and take longer to cut. Like this piece. That's quite a big chunk. Quite a big chunk of fat left on there. Anyway, folks, I am going to continue on to do this, and when I am all finished with this part, I shall return. All right, the pork is on the sheet. I am going to set my oven to 425 degrees. And while that is going, I am going to salt my pork. I have um, a couple teaspoons of salt and I'm going to do both here. This is just kosher salt. It's kind of flaked. Okay. And then some freshly cracked black pepper. more pepper in here. I'm going to mix it up to make sure everything is coated in salt and pepper. Push it all back out. Now the spicy, the pork and spicy broth says to use oil. I, re I don't hardly ever use oil so uh, for this part. So I'm not going to. <laughs> I think there's enough fat, it'll create enough juice. It shall be fine, but if you want to use a couple tablespoons of oil, you certainly can. Okay, I'm going to let this sit while the oven heats up. Then I'm going to put this in the oven for 30 minutes, and I'm going to set my timer for 15 minutes. At 15 minutes, I'm going to get a spatula and stir each of them up and then put them back in for another 15 minutes. So I'll be back when that process is done. I have a pan of water here. I am going to turn the heat on. I have one quartered onion. I'm going to drop this in. And I am just getting the water ready to boil. In the meantime, I am going to um, get the peppers ready. Let me get a garbage bowl. Garbage bowl. These are some mixed peppers. 
You can use whatever kind of peppers you like. Um, I have hot peppers. Oh my gosh, you can't even see. I have lots of peppers. Now, I buy these huge bags of peppers. Um, these are mild, these are hot. I use an array. Um, sometimes I use the chili de arbols, um, paseas. So you can use whatever kind of chilies you like in here, but I'm just gonna get these prepped up. You can find these on Amazon. I looked, these big bags of peppers are on Amazon. All I want to do, I should just do them right in this bowl. You can wear gloves for this if you need to, but you're just gonna pop the top off and try to get as many seeds as you can out of here. And you're gonna wanna do this because um, seeds are bitter. So if you go ahead and cook, put these in the water, the seeds are gonna make your water bitter. So you just gotta kinda break them apart, get all your seeds out. That's one. These are New Mexico chili pods. So I think I'm gonna use eight New Mexico chili pods and then I'm gonna use four Paseos, that's what I'm gonna use. So I'll use six of these and then um, two of the hot. I'm not gonna make this too awfully hot. all those seeds are out. So that's one. These kind of hold them at the top here. Two. Three. Four. Five. Six. Okay, so that is my mild ones. I'll use two hot ones. My oven is ready now finally for the um, meat. There's one hot one. You can make this as hot as you want. If you don't like hot at all, just use all mild chilies. And mild chilies won't be hot. They're so good. There is eight of those. And then I'm gonna do four of these. These are smokier and so delicious. I love them. These are getting a tiny bit stale. <laughs> I didn't even open the package yet, but that's okay. It'll still be fine. Usually they're pretty leathery. Right here, I have four plum tomatoes. Now, because I'm making soup and I am not making um, enchilada sauce, um, I do always use plum tomatoes for a little bit for my enchilada sauce. You do need some tomato. I'm gonna take the core out. 
I'm just going to quarter them and take the core out. Otherwise you can just take the core out and drop the whole thing in. Not a big deal. My water with my onions is boiling. So that means peppers are going in. And so are my tomatoes. I'm going to turn the heat off. I'm not trying to flavor a broth here, so I don't put my garlic in at this stage. This is strictly about softening up my peppers, my onion, and my tomato. And tomato doesn't need much to soften up, so. <coughs> Move it on over. I'm going to set my timer for 15 minutes. I'm going to set my timer for exactly 15 minutes. At 15 minutes, I'm pulling all my stuff out and discarding that, that water. Now, that pepper water is bitter. I never use it. You can if you want. I don't like it, so I don't use it. Um, so I will dump that out, but if you leave those peppers in there any longer, those will those the, will get bitter themselves, and that's what we're going to make our sauce out of. Setting my timer for 15 minutes. Next thing I'm going to do is bring 14 cups of water to a boil. Okay, well, my meat is cooking, my sauce is, or my water is coming to a boil, and my peppers are soaking. I'm going to cut two large onions and this is actually going to go into the jars with the meat um, i love onion flavor and i put onions in everything so it will be in the broth but it also we are going to use it as an ingredient i usually use white onion for this but uh, when I went to the market yesterday, you would not believe this, but my regular fries market, my Kroger market, uh, there was, I swear, a shortage of produce. It was crazy. I've never seen the produce department so empty. And there were no white onions, by the way. There were also only like two heads of lettuce left. Weird. So I'm just, I just have given this a rough chop, not a fine chop. It, it's soup. Um, when I make soup, a lot of times I like my onion in bigger chop. Bigger chunks. Okay, onions are done. We need to work on the garlic. Okay, I've got about eight cloves of garlic, which is perfect. So, I am just going to peel these. Okay. And these are going in the broth, so I'm not going to put those with the onions. Okay, I am going to clean this mess up and I am going to stir up my pork because I have one minute left until the, my 15 minute mark of stirring that up. 
Okay, my timer is up. I am going to take my tomatoes and everything out of my pan. Pop them right into the food processor. I have one cup of filtered water in here. My peppers are nice and soft. want to make sure I don't get my soaking liquid in there, at least a lot of it. Oop. Big mess. It ain't real cooking if you're not making a big mess, right? <laughs> okay, all those garlic cloves going in. And then this, this part is debatable. So you do what's right for you. FYI, this is not an approved canning recipe, uh, not a ball recipe, and it's not approved because it's not a recipe from Ball or the USDA. I am using bouillon cubes. Mm -hmm, called the Boyo by Noor. These do contain vegetable oil. They also contain cornstarch. Um, it isn't a large amount, therefore it doesn't bother me, and I use it all the time. That does not mean that it is right for you. If you're not comfortable with it, don't use it. Um, you can use homemade chicken broth in your pan instead of doing this. So you do what is right for you. If you want to use some better than bullion, use better than bullion. Use what you like. Your kitchen, your rules, man. My kitchen, my rules. <laughs> Okay, so to that, actually, I'm going to put my spices in later because I want them to stay whole. But what I am going to put in here is a half a tablespoon of garlic powder, reinforcing that garlic of flavor which equals out to be like a teaspoon and a half. I am putting in one tablespoon of onion powder. And I'm gonna blend that with this. Here we go. Protect your ear bones. pretty thick so I'm going to add in one more cup of water to blend it in that way it passes through the sieve easier because I do strain it our water is boiling I've just turned it down to a low I'm going to go ahead and strain this right in If you don't like to strain yours, you definitely don't have to. I just want to make sure I catch any seeds or bigger particles. Okay, and this is what is left behind. Seeds, skins, all that pulp. If it doesn't bother you, you can go ahead and put it in. Some people like it in there. Okay, there is our broth. I am now going to add a 
tablespoon of cumin. And I'm going to put the Mexican oregano in as well. I didn't want to put it in during the blender process because it's bigger and it would get stuck in there and then the flavors wouldn't be wouldn't be enough flavor in here. It wouldn't go through the sieve. Two tablespoons. Okay, I'm gonna taste this and make sure there's enough salt in it. Um, I don't like to can with a ton of salt, but it does need some flavor. That broth is delicious and it does need salt. I'm gonna drop in um, a tablespoon of kosher salt flakes. Those are in flakes. It looked like a huge bunch, but it was flakes. I'll get a clean spoon, taste it one more time, make sure there's enough. That is a good broth. Oh man. Now, I don't normally use a lot of tomato in my enchilada sauce, but this is pozole and it needs a little bit extra tomato. So I use four plum tomatoes, in case you're wondering about that. I just want to tell you this broth is so perfect. I could literally just drink it. So I'm hoping that I have some left that I can just drink out of a mug because that is what I'm doing with the leftovers. All right, folks, here we go. Um, pork and onions into the jars while that is coming to a heat and it's just about to a boil. Get the show on the road. This does take a little bit longer for, you know, um, getting the process started, but well worth it, let me tell you. I am getting hungry just making this. Hopefully you can see. I kind of have you at a funky angle. Ooh, that's, that's full. That's pretty full. So this is kind of like the roast pork and spicy broth, except we're doing it in a, a chili broth. I'm gonna stick the top on this till it comes to a boil. It's taking its sweet time. And I have to get the overboard, guys. Clean towel so it's still going in. Make sure you break the pork up so it's not in big hunks too, because it will stick together. I'm gonna put a little bit more in that one. 
Just kind of divide it up, make your jars look even. Okay, that part is done. I'm gonna go ahead and put onions in. We're looking at about a half a cup of onions per jar. You're going to want to clean your jar lid or your jar rims with uh, white vinegar because of the fat. This broth smells amazing. I just have to tell you that. Okay. Make sure you stir and scoop from the bottom when you are doing this kind of broth because let me tell you, the um, oregano always settles to the bottom. Oh, there's one more thing I wanna do. Bay leaf, duh. Bay leaf, breaking the bay leaf in half. I want half a bay leaf per jar. So I get questions all the time if the um, seasonings are too strong for the jars. Now, some seasonings do get stronger as they're sitting and get overpowering. Sage is one of those. Also, black pepper is one of those. Um, bay leaf is not. Bay is fine. The Mexican oregano is fine. Um, garlic is fine. I've never had garlic get way too strong. I've never cracked open a jar and thought, oh, holy garlic. It's never happened. Um, bay leaf cans up just perfectly. It is delicious. But if I put bay leaf in the broth and just simmered it for 10 minutes, it wouldn't be enough to get that bay flavor in there. So I do half a bay leaf. I am leaving one inch head space. I have my canner um, simmering over here. Where is my thingamabobber? There it is. Okay, de-bubbling, mixing everything in. This smells so good. A smidge more broth. Okay, and there is my headspace. You can make this perfectly heat free with just mild chilies. It is still a super delicious dish and you know, spice isn't always heat. I think people get that really confused. I know there's a lot of you that don't like spicy, spicy heat anywho, but spice equals flavor. And you want that flavor. too much in that one, but I do not. It is perfect. I do, however, tend to get too much in my ladle and then spill it everywhere. Look how beautiful that red broth is. Deep. Oh, yum. And yes, I'm hoping I have a cup left. Oh, 
just a mug of warm broth. Yum. seem to do anything without making a big mess. <laughs> I need a pop holder. probably have 16 cups of water by now um, a couple extras so I'm gonna put in there for 15 cups of water because I think 15 cups of water is perfect and I'm gonna have just a smidge left over but again I want to drink it so that is fine with me lots of cleanup to do today <laughs> okay vinegar on my uh, paper towel to clean my rims I am I don't know I am so excited to have this already ready and to have this uh, the pork canned right into the broth. Oh my gosh. Pizzoli is one of my favorite soups. And pozole is about eating it with all the toppings. As I crack one of these open, I will bring you along for it. I am going to try to, because um, a lot of you say you don't have Instagram, so I will try every time. I, every time I make something, I'm going to start pulling a jar aside and leaving it in the kitchen. That way, I remember to crack it open and use it for you, and show you how we're, we're eating it, and what it looks like when we heat it up, and what we embellish it with, that kind of stuff. Okay. All right, everybody is in the hot tub. I am now going to lock her down. And then, just because I find it easier, I use a towel or I use my kitchen boa with the towels on the ends to tighten these babies up. I 
All right. As always, I am going to bring this up to heat. Um, I don't do it on a full high heat. I do it between um, five and six highs over there. But I like to bring it up slowly so that there's less siphoning in my jars. Um, when it comes up to heat, you'll start seeing my dial move up just slightly. This will start steaming. The petcock will start steaming like a freight train. I'm going to go ahead and let that steam 10 minutes. After that, I will pop my weight on at 15 for pressure, at 15 pounds for pressure. And I will wait after putting that on for my dial to come up to 15 pounds of pressure. And then when that happens, this will start to jiggle. As soon as this jiggles, I know she's ready. I set my timer for 90 minutes and then I'll adjust my heat. I can usually bring her down to about a three. And then I wait my 90 minutes. After that, of course, turn the heat off, let it sit till it comes down to pressure. And then after it comes down to zero, I still let it sit for about another hour, hour and a half before I take off my um, weight because uh, it'll still be full of pressure. After that, there's a slight hiss. I crack it open, let it, I undo these, let it sit for 10 minutes. Then I crack it open halfway, let it sit for another 10 minutes and then remove my jars. It's a process, takes a little bit of time, but so worth it. So I will see you in a few hours. These guys are done and out of the canner and they are gorgeous. Um, it is the next morning. I didn't show pulling them out of the canner because um, it got late. <laughs> but every one of them are sealed and they are beautiful they, with the deep red. Oh my gosh, I cannot wait to open this. Mm. No siphoning if you can see how clear my water is. So I will bring you along. I'm gonna start gathering collection there, leave them there until for dinner so I can show them to you when I crack them open. And what else? Um, I have another canning project coming up for you. So I've gotta get my canner washed and get ready. Look how beautiful and red that is, yum. That is pretty darn gorgeous. All right, there you go. There is my canned version of Pozole. Anyway, folks, if you enjoyed the video, please give me a thumbs up. If you haven't subscribed yet, please subscribe. It really helps me out a lot, and I sure do appreciate your support. You can find me on Instagram at JennyGoff18. I'm also on Facebook, and you can visit my blog for all of my recipes, including this one. Thanks for watching. I'll see you next time.